Hey family, welcome to The Hub. have nabbed a good man, y'all, a good man from the DC area named Dominic Isley. He's an entrepreneur that recently got engaged to a very close dear friend of mine named Monica. So, you know, I had to nab him in to get some insight here today. So welcome to the show, Dominic. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem, no problem, good brother. So, you know, we were having breakfast the other day and I just wanted to, to bring out my camera and my recorder and <laughs> to, to, to just record some of the insight that you were sharing at breakfast. And I thought it was important to bring you here to the show because there's so many professional women that are frustrated with dating and what dating looks like. And as a grown man as yourself, I'd, I'd just love to take it back, right? Before engaged and back to the dating scene, you know, like when you were dating, um, what, did that, what did that look like for you? Because especially dating apps, I know ladies are over it, right? Like they are done with the dating app. It's all these crazy people. So what was your mindset when getting on a dating app? Were you there long? Did you do a lot of swiping? Did you have a routine? All the things, go ahead. Um, for me, using a dating app was the most efficient. Um, it's the opportunity where I can meet the most amount of women. Uh, I remember one time I had a, a sister ask me, you know, why would she, why would you use a dating app? Mm -hmm. And the example I gave her was if I was in a nightclub and I'm walking around the room and I'm talking to like various women, at some point, these women are gonna see me talking to other women and they're probably gonna be like, no, I'm not gonna talk to him because I see you moving around the room. Whereas when you're dealing with a dating app, you are able to reach out to uh, numerous women. I think mm -hmm. at the most, I would probably do would be maybe five or seven. Um, and you're just pretty much waiting to see whether or not somebody's gonna respond. And if they do, I would just go ahead and you know ask basic questions like, hey, how's you doing? How's your day? Uh, what do you do for a living? Um, at times it can be a little um, perplexing because you're dealing with multiple women and you're having multiple very uh, conversations. Oh Sometimes man, keeping track. Exactly. Exactly. Um, sometimes you're texting women. Sometimes you're actually doing FaceTime. Sometimes you're on the phone with women. And you and the difficulty for me was trying to remember the conversation. Certain things that I've told one particular sister about my life is like, wait a minute, did I tell this sister over here? Yeah. Um, sometimes, every now and again, a sister would reference something, and I'd be like, yeah, you told me that, and she'd be like, no, I didn't. And then I'd be like, oh yeah, that's right, that was someone else. <laughs> that was someone else. So that happens. And overall, it was okay. Um, I initially thought starting the process, you know, if I met 10 women, I figured minimum there were three that I could work with. And when I say work with, meaning I could acquiesce with, I could augment, uh, didn't need them to be perfect. But clearly, there was enough foundation there, morals, values, things of that nature, interest where we could connect. There was enough emotional maturity that I could see within them that was like, okay, they are open to being in a relationship that leads to marriage and they're not afraid. They know who they are. So yeah, that was pretty much my experience. Oh man. Okay. So were you on the apps for a long time? Has it been like a decade that you've been looking for your love or was it like two weeks? Um, no, I would say total time, it might have been a year, okay. maybe maybe a year and a half. Um, there was a period of time when I was wanted like strong for like maybe six months. And then I would meet someone. And once I met someone and I actually made a connection and I went out on dates with them, I literally stopped. I was no longer searching uh, or talking to any other woman. And my thing is, is I wanted to give each woman the opportunity to really get to know me and I wanted to get to know them. And the only way I could do that is to give them my full undivided attention. Okay, um, so, so what, what was usually the decider 
that you want to give this person attention versus the other person just in general in the past? In terms of conversation, uh, when I would have conversations with women, generally you can kind of tell whether or not someone has emotional maturity. Mm -hmm. um, you might get a little bit into just slightly uh, their past relationships, their sense of humor. Uh, if this is someone who, when we're having a conversation, does the conversation flow? Even when there are moments where we have difference of opinion, uh, how are we able to have those differences, explain our, our perspective and our view. And even though it doesn't align, are we able to move past that in the conversation to a different topic? Or is it something that lingers? Is it something where you can kind of tell, okay, that was a bit of a sensitive issue or by the tone or inflection in their voice, or if we're video chatting, you can kind of see the facial expression that maybe they felt a little bit uncomfortable. Those would be, the general ideas or ways in which I would kind of navigate and say, all right, I think we can go ahead and, and I'll go ahead and we'll go out. And of course, that also has something to do with it. Once we had a date, how everything went, if everything went smoothly, and I really enjoyed myself and I asked her how she enjoyed herself and she did, I would say to myself, okay, there's no reason for me to not continue to date this person. Oh, nice. Okay. So, so tell us, you know, you met a certain woman in uh, January of this year. And um, what was it about her profile or about her that made her stand out against the rest? Yeah. Um, her profile, unfortunately, I can't remember uh, what it was in the profile. The truth. <laughs> um, but I will say this through conversations in a very short period of time. Well, first of all, let me say this. When we first connected we ended up texting and within, I would say maybe two weeks, she asked me a very pertinent question. She asked me what my intentions were. And I told her that I was you know, on this app looking to develop a relationship that led to marriage. And afterwards, she then says to me, okay, here's my phone number. Hmm. And that immediately was the first thing that stuck out. And the reason I say that is because all of my previous experiences for practically a year and a half, I always made it a point to, if I was texting a sister or you know, predominantly texting a sister, I would probably go about a month before I would actually ask her for a phone number because I wanted women to feel comfortable. I recognize you know, women have a certain perception of the whole online thing. Some women are concerned about what other people think or what their family members think. Uh, some women have heard their girlfriend's experience and it hasn't been good. And I recognize also sometimes men are not always honest, whether it be in their profile or in their picture. So <laughs> that she in just two weeks was the first one that says, okay, let me get your number. Let's exchange numbers and let's have a conversation. That immediately stuck out. Now, once we had a conversation and I learned more about her, one of the things I could immediately tell was that she was emotionally and mentally mature, which mm -hmm. means healthy enough for a relationship. Um, even though, And she also, in her case, she did have a history of being in relationships that lasted. So that was a good thing as well. And out of her previous relationship, she had taken about two years, which is funny because that's the same time frame that I've always done since my entire dating life, I've always made it a point to take two years, at least minimum of reflection, seeing how, you know, I was in a relationship, things that, that I want in a relationship, I want in a spouse, more or less finding out what it is for me, which I think is essential in a relationship is first asking yourself, what is it that you value mm -hmm. in a relationship? And then two, the question is, what are you prepared to give? Because when you're talking about marriage, that's really what you're going to be doing. You're going to be yeah. giving yeah. So for me, um, I had uh, four fundamental things that I kind of looked at. First one, as I said earlier, was emotional and mental maturity. The second thing was cooperation, what I call cooperation slash acquiescing. When you look at marriages that are married for decades, the one thing you consistently see, and I, I've been fortunate enough to be around couples who've been married for 30, 40, 50 plus years, Beautiful. the husband and the wife, there are hundreds, thousands. I guess over a decade, it could be even millions of times when either one of them is going to consistently cooperate or simply acquiesce. And I love the definition 
of acquiesce. I think that's the, the quintessential word. I think that's a word in my opinion, I think a lot of people should hear because that's really what you're gonna do. And to me, there are times when you think about cooperating slash acquiescing simply means that you're gonna do things that you don't necessarily feel comfortable doing or wanna do, but you put your trust in your relationship, in your spouse, and you simply say, okay. So it's those two things. The other thing is, is that I wanted a woman who was my peace. Um, Monica is the first woman that I've ever met who I truly understand what that means mm. when someone says a woman is a man's peace. Like I looked forward to seeing her. Uh, there were times, I'm not gonna lie, I literally would cut my day short because I wanted to get back to her. And we're not doing anything. I mean, we could just have dinner and watch television, but it's really about being in her company. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing is, uh, for me, is, is being with a woman who genuinely loves and cares for you. And it's, she shows that in numerous ways when she's consistently smiling, she's consistently telling me that she loves me, she appreciates me. Um, she's always asking me about how my day is. And I'll admit, even when it comes to asking me about my day, I'm a kind of person where if she's like, how was your day? A lot of times I just say it's, it was fine. It was yeah. fine. And she, she accepts that. She accepts that. Now, there are times, of course, I'll say my day is fine, and then I'll give her a little bit more information. But she's always asking that. And to find that is rare. Um, so, yeah, those are like the four, I would say the four things that definitely make you stand out. I hope, I hope, I hope folk were listening to that. <laughs> Nick, that was, that was good, good. You know, good, good, be a man's peace. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> but then at the same time, right, you are the same for her, right? So that's the cooperation piece. It's not like, oh, you be my peace and I'll be the crazy person. <laughs> no, we, we create a peaceful environment. And you said, you know, you'd be kicking it and watching TV. So I don't know how much you want to go into this, but I'd love to touch on the weight. You know, because many people in the sex driven society, right? Like they have sex within the first date, the second date. So I feel like, you know, the, there's something special in the weight and getting to know someone. So can you share a little bit about that in your journey? Um, well, I mean, in regards to the weight, I mean, I'll admit being, uh, being a Muslim and her not being Muslim, I had expressed to her, and she was very open to that, which I also greatly appreciated the fact that she was, um, that you know we don't make it a point to rush to intimacy at all. Uh, we like to take our time. We definitely court. In the Muslim religion, you generally are intimate once you're married. Now, let's be honest here. We're all human beings. People have urges. Uh, one may not always follow that edict, uh, but we definitely made it a point to take our time before being intimate. Uh, and that's something for me, when I was young, I learned from my mother that that was something that you kind of didn't want to rush into uh, because it's very emotional for women, uh, irregardless of what women say. Even when women say, hey, it's just, you know, it's just physical, it's just sex. It's never just sex. There's always an emotional element there. So when being intimate with someone, you want to make sure that, hey, this person is saying, first of all, because that's the other thing. I mean, you really don't know <laughs> a person. I mean, you know a person, but once you're intimate with a person- But they can go crazy. Yeah, they can, they can. And it can be men or women, but uh, yeah. from, from my perspective, um, in, my, in my past, that's something that I've never been very um, strong in, in pushing for in, in the very early on of, of dating a woman. Um, I wanted to see how she was under as many situations as possible. Obviously, you're not going to be able to cover every situation before sometimes you get to that level of intimacy. Um, but when you do, hopefully, you know, she's saying and, and there is stability. Nothing really changes. You can see that, okay, she is, again, as I said earlier, you know, emotionally and mentally healthy. Beautiful. Ah, just beautiful. So one of the things that really popped up for me when we were talking over breakfast was you had this strong attention intention, but many of the women you came across kind of were in this, you know, if it happens, it happens, it doesn't, it doesn't. Can you talk a little bit to that, Nick? Um, yeah, I mean, that 
was something that was a little uh, disappointing, uh, especially when I'm, I, in my case, when it came to online dating, uh, I mean, I'm 44 years old, so I'm not looking at any women, honestly, beyond the age of probably 35. That's about as young as I want to go. Mm -hmm. um, and many of the women that I would talk to were probably in their late 30s, some maybe 40, 41 years old. And in the beginning, in my profile, I let it be known. I'm not looking for friends. I'm not looking for girlfriends. I'm not looking to hang out. That's something to me you do in my 20s. I let it be known. I'm looking for a relationship that leads to marriage. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times women hear that. They like the idea of it. Mm -hmm. And women, I think, want that. The question is, are you willing? And there is a difference, in my opinion, between wanting and willing. You can want to be married, and then there's willing. Are you willing to do what's necessary? And that means that you're going to be uncomfortable and you're going to be vulnerable. And the one thing I used to tell women all the time when they talked about vulnerability is no human being wants to be vulnerable. Men don't like being vulnerable. But those of us who are secure and we know what we want and we understand that having a wife is really, for a man, the best way to improve your quality of life, as well as for a woman. So in order to do that, you have to be willing to be vulnerable. You have to be willing to feel uncomfortable. You have to be willing to have that conversation with someone that's going to make you feel some sort of way. And even when you're in the midst of having that conversation and eternally you're feeling however it is you're feeling. You just got to be calm, listen. And let's say, for example, you do, for whatever reason, you, you have a conversation that, that causes some, some tone in your voice or some emotion. Mm -hmm. If you're able to recognize the tone in your voice and the emotion, more or less the person says to you, hey, you seem like you're getting a little emotional, you need to be able to say no. I'm not getting emotional. Yes, my tone is risen, but it's because of this particular reason. Or even if you simply say, well, the reason why I feel this way and you explain it, that's always a good thing. One of the biggest things that I would probably say sometimes, or at least my experience with women, is it wasn't when I would ask questions and I would say, well, why? Many times, why you feel a certain way? Many times women would just say, well, I just feel that way. Mm -hmm. And to me, when I hear that, I mean, of course, we're in a conversation. I accept that. But that's not the truth. That, that you, you don't just simply feel that way. There's a reason for it. And my question is, are you comfortable enough? And that was a key. Are you comfortable enough? Are you secure enough, emotionally and mentally healthy enough to tell me? Again, I'm not uh, a person who's judgmental at all. I don't judge people regardless of what it is you like. If that's what you like, that's what you like. I actually like it when people are different. To me, the norm is, in my honest opinion, it's boring because everybody wants to do what everyone else is doing. The most unique individuals, either good or bad, are the ones who do things differently. So that was something that I always wanted to know um, about women. Uh, I think I answered your question. I hope I didn't. That was good. One. That was good, good. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, so tell me, what, I, I feel like you made a decision, I think it was on the first date. So what was that decision on the first date? Well, we had, uh, Monica and I had been conversating on the phone for about a month. So, um, after a month's time, I was like, okay, I really want to be in this woman's company. And early on, again, all of those qualities that I mentioned earlier, she had, and she had, she had some others, which, uh, which was really a breath of fresh air and very attractive was her, as I, and I mentioned it to you earlier, Coach Cass, in that, that breakfast that we had, that uh, her humility, um, the fact that she was humble, I really, that was extremely attractive uh, to me. So, Wait, when you say humble, do you mean because she is a corporate diva making amazing money, bought her own house, her own car, got her own, you know, all the things she wasn't saying, well, look at me, what you bring into the table. Is that the kind of humble that she's talking about? Spell it out. What kind of humble are you talking about? What I'm talking about is the fact that she Honestly, the things that she valued in a man did not include the financial, his, his uh, social class, his level of education. It was about how he treated her. The question was, would he be there? Is he someone that she can depend on? And is he accountable? Those were, were qualities. This is a person who understood that in terms of, from a humility standpoint, 
that a, a man isn't going to be perfect. She isn't going to be perfect. She understands that, that a relationship is going to take work. Um, and the, the work, a lot of times, and I know people, in my humble opinion, people always use that word. You got to put in work. You got to put in work. Work is learning to self-resolve. Mm. That's a lot of it. Because at the end of the day, in a relationship, I mean, to me, a lot of books talk about, okay, well, you're going to compromise, he's going to compromise, and then you're going to be happy. That, that's not what happens in a marriage. That doesn't even happen 50% of the time in a marriage. Many times, the husband or the wife is going to have to compromise, and they're going to have to self-resolve. They're going to have to be okay with making that decision to acquiesce to their spouse and not be resentful. That's the key. As long as you can do that, you'll be able to sustain your marriage. Uh, but going back to the, the humility thing, because I didn't want to get off that. Um, it was the fact that she, you know, cared about social things. She was an honest, sincere person. Um, you didn't need to be, she doesn't do, you know, fake people. She's not looking for class or status. She just wants a man who, again, loves her, cares for her is going to be there for her um, and she will support him. And that's an, another thing that's very important for men is a woman who will support him and say, you know what, sweetie, okay, you may not be able to do something at this particular point in time. And even though you can't do it, we're going to make it work. One of the things that I'll admit, I, I told her from the beginning, and I think a lot of times women don't hear this and I, and I kind of learned this from men who have been married 20 plus years or almost, you know, going on 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, that's important is, is you, you have to be content with the person that you're with. And you should also, I learned, which is what I told her, there are going to be times unintentionally with no malice, I'm going to disappoint you. Mm -hmm. It's not any intentions, but that's going to happen and you're going to disappoint me, okay? And we're going, even though we're disappointed, we're not gonna call it quits for our relationship. We're not gonna all of a sudden be like, oh God, you disappointed me. Oh, you didn't meet the requirements or you, know, you said you were gonna do something, something came up and you weren't able to do it. Those things are going to happen in a relationship. At the end of the day, children, unfortunately, disappoint their parents. Parents disappoint their, their children. However, you still don't let go of the love that you have for one another. You still don't say, okay, you know what? This is it, I'm done. This isn't gonna work for me. Um, none of us have ever experienced that in life. In my, in my life experience, I've never gotten things when I wanted, how I wanted, and the way I wanted. And I know I am not the only one, regardless right. of gender, race, or socioeconomic level. It is like that for all of us, so. Oh, yeah. that was good. That reminds me of a conversation Andy and I had early you know early 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 <laughs> that we decided that we would not throw around the word divorce once we decided that we were getting married that's it baby <laughs> you know like because i grew up hearing that word divorce a lot and yet the people stayed together so i'm like why even threaten to leave if you're still here like it's crazy so we made a pact you know like that that word just is not in our atmosphere it's it's not an option we gonna work this thing out we are resolute like this this is it baby <laughs> you know whether you like it or not so um that that has given a safety um for us because i know so many women and men have been in situations where they felt abandoned right that they got left and and they wonder if that's going to happen again so it's it's kind of nice to be in a space where you're like no we're going to disappoint each other. Things are going to happen, but we're still doing this thing called life no matter what. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's something that uh, me and Monica both uh, talked about that when we got married. I mean, for me, when I commit to something, I'm fully committed. So yeah, that word divorce is like, no, you, you, you stuck with me for life. I ain't going nowhere. That's, that's so, No, I'm not going anywhere. Not at all. Not at all. So you... You decided in March that you were going to marry this woman and you proposed in August. So like, 
a whole five months before, was there something specific that happened that made you say after just three months of getting to know each other, right? Because I often say um, when a man knows, he knows, and it don't take 97 years to figure out if you are a candidate or not. So three months of knowing her and then, you know, engage five months later, like what, what was that? What was that like? Um, I mean, for me, it was easy. Um, the, you know, in that in that short period of time, the conversations that we had. I mean, one of the things that I'll admit, within the first two weeks of us knowing each other, uh, one particular evening, uh, Monica told me that she had Coach Cass's cards. And oh, the buff deck. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> so we literally went through every single card that you had, and it was good. I mean, I would say many of the questions I had already thought of, but there were a few in there that I was like, oh, I hadn't thought of that. Um, and it was really opening. Again, I think that was a part of the opening myself up to her and as well as she doing it to me. And again, over time, the conversations that we had with each other were clear, precise. I, I mean, this is the first relationship where the communication has been easy for me. And the fact that it was easy for me made it very comfortable and in that comfortableness and her level of support and her level of attention and caring for me i really hadn't had that in a relationship many of my relationships in the past i was the one who was doing that for women um so for me in a very early on i mean i'll admit it was it was our uh, march when i was actually looking at rings thinking wow. to myself okay, this is the woman that yes I'm, I'm going to marry and i had made the decision uh, and I think I mentioned that to you also uh, that that Sunday morning, well, I think it was Sunday, that, that morning breakfast that we had, Coach Cass, that, yes, this is somebody that I, I knew in August in the summertime was I was I was going to propose to, no question about it. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm I'm just excited. One, that the love deck helped you to get clear. Uh, that's what I heard from this whole interview. So if y'all don't have the love deck, you need to get it. Ah, the 60 questions to ask before choosing the one. Um, and just the insight. You know, I, I appreciate you for just being open and honest about your journey. And I know for a fact that someone listening or watching has been helped by this interview because you, you, you shared the real deal, good brother. So I am excited to have you as a part of my family and I'm just happy that you are here to, to share your story um, overall. So just thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and for everyone tuning in, um, keep loving, keep laughing, keep living. God bless.